Hey, I'm Chris Epp from Make Everything, and today we're taking a piece of walnut slab and some scrap steel, and we're turning it into this clock. Check it out. Okay, so before we get started on the CNC, I'll explain how I came to some of the dimensions um, for this project. Now, I had this crotch piece left from the slab of walnut. This is the same slab of walnut that I used to make my father's urn. Um, and I wanted to sort of lay out how it works. So I reached around my shop looking for something. I had like some lids. Um, I had another bucket. But they weren't really big enough. I wanted to make this about 18 inches in diameter. And that's when I found this. This is a motorcycle tire, um, and this is exactly, this is 18 and a half inches in diameter, which is pretty close to what I wanted. So um, the point here is that, you know, I wanted to represent this so I could see the way it laid out on the clock. Like, did I want it over there, want it down there, uh, how the clock would lay out on the slab. So by just sort of looking around my shop and finding something that gave me that visual representation, I was able to do it. Um, and lay it out perfect. Now, if you didn't have, obviously, a motorcycle tire, you could make a template, but it's nice to be able to lay it out visually before going over to the CNC, because now I know kind of where my center point is, and that's what I'm gonna base my, my paths on uh, as my zero, zero, so that my cut around the outside and all my number engravings are all uh, equal. So let's get this thing chopped up and get it over onto the X-Carb. Okay, so my first tool to use on this one was just the bandsaw, um, and I probably could have just fit this thing on the X-Carve as it was, but I thought it'd be better to segment away some of the material so it'd be a little easier to clamp. Um, and then, since it was so uneven, I thought it'd be a good idea to grab a planer and just plane off some of the high spots on the back. This is just a little uh, battery-powered planer from Milwaukee, and I'm just taking little cuts so I don't wind up with big grooves and sort of just looking at it to visually understand if it's level or not. And I make a little mistake trying to plane down the front side as well. Shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have, shouldn't have made an attempt at this, but it's okay. I got my Starbond, some medium brown. Put some of that goo in there. And we should be good. So with a little bit of super glue in there, just to close up that gap, um, it, it's basically imperceivable in the finished prod product. So Starbond makes glue in a couple different colors, which is cool. And I used the brown and some activator, and it really just hid the crack completely. I went back then again with the planer and just planed down a couple more spots to try to level it out. Now, I was originally going to go right to the CNC, but I decided it'd be a good idea to mark the center and actually do some sanding to start off and try and get some more of the high spots down and also just give myself a better representation of what the final product was going to look like. So I just used some 80 grit sandpaper um, and really roughed it down. Now, once I had it over on the CNC, I went into the X-Carve uh, Inventables easel software and I started out by drawing an 18-inch circle and centering it in a location that I knew, which was 10 by 10 on the X and Y. Uh, then I just drew some lines and I made sure that the centers of those lines were at the same 10 X, 10 Y location. And then by just copying and pasting and rotating them around an angle, I was able to perfectly lay out where my numbers would be on the clock. So you can see I'm drawing another circle, the same 10 X, 10 Y. I make the dimensions a little different and that's gonna be the ring that I actually put my numbers on. I grab the text tool and I start drawing numbers and these I'm just placing by eye. So I draw, you know, basically one through 12, copying and pasting, uh, changing the number and adding them to the layout of the clock. Now, essentially I'm, I'm drawing lines that would normally be cut by the CNC, but I'm using the tools within the easel software to lay this out. Now, I'm terrible at Adobe Illustrator, so this is a great crutch for me, and it allows me to get a lot done without actually using Illustrator. 
Now I open up a second little project and I copy and paste my work just in case I wanna make changes. And then I go back and I delete all those lines uh, except for the numbers and the perimeter. And I'm good to go to figure out you know, what bit I'm gonna use and cut it. I'm gonna use a 60 degree V bit and then a quarter inch uh, down cutting bit to cut the outside. So now back on the actual machine itself, I grab some clamps and I like to put a little bit of a spoil board down on top of the spoil board on the machine just so that I don't wind up cutting through. And something that uh, I wanted to make sure of was that my orientation was correct. So what I did was I drew a little 12 where I knew the 12 o'clock was gonna be. And since I had my center line, I just lined it up with the lines on the x carved bed and I knew it was more or less gonna lay out exactly as I'd planned. I set up the V bit and I zeroed it off and I let it go to work. Now, one of the things that I should have taken some more care to was I really should have flattened the top of this slab um, before I went and carved on the machine. So what I found was that the numbers on the left side of the clock engraved to a totally different depth than the numbers in like the upper right corner. So the, the 12, the one, two, three, and four basically didn't engrave on the first paths and the five wound up being super deep. So I wound up having to go back and then re-indicate uh, the cutting head off of the lower section of the slab so that it would cut a little bit deeper and I'd actually be able to see those numbers. Once I finally had the numbers all figured out and engraved, I was able to move ahead and do the actual cutting of the circle around it. So with the numbers finally figured out, I went over to a quarter inch spiral down cutting bit and a little bit of a mistake on my part here too with that uneven face was as the machine went to the cut perimeter, it did give a little bit of a cut line in the center, but it's all right, I was able to sand it out. And you'll notice here, I didn't cut all the way through the slab, um, again, because it was a little uneven, so I decided to stop the cut a little bit prematurely so that I wouldn't wind up doing any damage to my machine. Um, I really should have leveled this thing and it wouldn't have been that hard. So if you're ever gonna make something like this, try to flatten the slab so that it's parallel on both sides before you bring it over to your CNC just to avoid any issues. So you can kind of see that little score line there. I took the 80 grit sandpaper and I just sanded that out. It was, it was pretty light, so it wasn't too big of a deal. And then I just went and sort of sanded away some of the buzz marks from the engraving bit. I went back over to the bandsaw and I cut along that line really, really tight to the edge profile um, and it allowed me to free up the perfect circle that the CNC left. Now with that all freed up, I just took some more 80 grit sandpaper and I sanded that edge. Now I could have used the router here uh, with a, a pattern bit, but again, since the top was super uneven, I didn't want to run the risk of making any mistakes at that point, so the sander is always pretty easy. Now moving into my metal shop, I had wanted to wrap this thing with eighth inch by two inch steel, and I thought it was gonna be a lot easier than it really was. I have this kind of inexpensive slip roller, and on sheet metal, this thing works great, but it really just couldn't handle the eighth inch thick material. I do have a full size ring roller, but it was actually a little bit too big for the 18 inch circle. So what I decided to do was sort of just bend the material around my leg and sort of roll it to manually make like an oblong looking circle um, and then go back to the ring roller to try and refine it. Now, you know, eighth inch stock bends really easily by hand, so you'd think the ring roller would have no problem, but it really just didn't have the, the power um, to, to really push this kind of material. It just, it just wasn't set up for it. So I struggled with it a little bit um, and the ring roller definitely smoothed out some of those big bumps that I had in it, which was really nice. Um, but I, in the end, I probably should have just used a little bit thinner piece of material. Maybe some 16 gauge sheet metal instead of eighth inch thick, you know, basically flat stock. Once I was able to sort of smooth it out a little bit though, I was pretty happy with the way the circle turned out. And I'm able to get it out of the ring roller and sort of position it on the slab itself. Now, as I was sort of, sort of ringing it around, I realized that I should probably put some screws into it and use some clamps to sort of figure out my positions. And I had always intended on using some screws around the perimeter, so this wasn't a change. Um, I pushed it over the horn of my anvil and just used a little drill bit to drill some holes. And then I just used some self-tapping screws um, so that they would pre-drill a little bit into the walnut. And I started to screw this in around the perimeter so that I could align the edges and cut them.
I decided to cut one side square off with the porta band and then all I had to do was reattach the steel to the ring so that I could mark out the second side and cut it square. At this point I grabbed a quick grip clamp and it made a big difference and made my life a little bit easier. And I was really just looking for like a rough line here because if I could get myself a line and cut it I could always adjust it um, or fill a gap with the welder which is actually what I wound up having to do. When I drew my line um, and cut it with the bandsaw, once I rewrapped it around the ring, I wound up with about an eighth of an inch gap. And, you know, it's not a big deal. I really didn't want the ring to be too small. I was very worried that the ring was going to be too small because once I welded it up too small, it would have been a real pain to cut it and try and spread it apart again. So if anything, I wanted a little bit more clearance. I went back over to my post vise and I just bent those ends over to make sure they were round and also twisted them so that they would align well. Back over on the welding bench I grabbed a piece of scrap and I used some clamps to just sort of clamp it together and sort of push it against my chest so that I would be able to close up the gap um, and get it to where I thought it needed to be. Now it's a little hard to see in the video but there's about an eighth of an inch gap between the two pieces so I just did some bridging tacks and then I went back in with the welder and did some filling kind of by pecking with the MIG welder just to add material as I went. Um, and when you're trying to fill a gap with a MIG welder, it's important to let the welds cool down just a little bit before you add more. Because if you just add a bunch of molten metal to a joint like that, it'll just flow out. You can see how red hot it was there for a second. Once I had it welded up, I needed to grind the inside seam before I could even figure out if it fit. So I'm using a Farad Polyfan Curve Disc here, which is the grinding disc that has the abrasive wrapped all the way around the front. And it's really great for getting into hard to reach places. And you can see the way that the abrasive runs all the way around the front, even onto the back side. Once I had those welds ground, I could see that my slab did fit really well. I was super happy with the fit up on it. It was like a nice tight friction fit. And with that done, I could go back and complete the grinding of the welds and really smooth out uh, this ring. Now I did wind up with kind of like some a, a weird flat spot from the weld so I went over to the horn of the anvil and I'm using a flatter um, and normally you wouldn't swing a flatter hammer like this but it, it worked out to sort of adjust the circle and just get it get it a little more true to round. Um, in the end the circle wasn't really perfect uh, but the wood definitely helped true it up and I was pretty happy with it. Now I wanted to make sure I marked it so that I knew where the weld seam was going to go and where it sort of looked best on the slab. So I had to do a, another little test fit up. Um, I banged it around a little bit on the wood just to you know make sure it looked nice and round. And once I knew where it was going to go, I was able to sort of mark it. And then I can pop that wood back out and do a little more finished grinding. Now this is a Polyvlees disc from Farad. And what this has is a grinding sort of compound in it you know some sand abrasive and then also a unitized scotch bright style uh, abrasive within it and what it does is it totally blends out your heavy grind lines and leaves you with a nice surface finish um, and the discs are super super durable so i'm using a variable speed grinder you have to run these a little bit slow but running them around uh, on the edge really cleaned it up and it left the surface perfect for the finish that I'm going to do on this project. Um, I was originally going to use a black paint on this, but then as I thought about it, I figured with the natural look of the wood, I would go with a blackening patina, which you'll see in a second. Before I get to that, I did take a countersink and countersink all the holes that I drilled around the ring so that the heads of the screws um, would fit nice. Now I'm doing sort of my final fit up and my marking just to make sure that when I put this thing together finally it's going to be uh, correct. Now you know the the ring is a little out so I wanted to make sure everything was going to look right when it was done and I wasn't going to just sort of jam that thing back in there and have it be in the wrong spot. I'm using a black magic uh, blackening patina which is really awesome stuff. Um, I've used a bunch of the different steel blackening patinas and I have to say that the Sculpt Nouveau Black Magic I think is the best. Um, so by having the steel nice and clean, you spray it on and I'm putting it on cold and just wiping it in with a piece of paper towel and then you can kind of neutralize it with water. And then I go back with some black wax 
and I coat over that black patina with black wax and it just adds a little bit of depth to that blackening and it also protects the surface because now you're waxing the finish as you're adding a little bit of blackening to it as well. So it's a really nice, deep, rich, sort of natural black look and I think with the live edge slab that's important. Now back over in the wood shop, I can drill the hole for my clock mechanism um, and I just sized it based off the spindle. I bought this clock mechanism on Amazon. It was pretty inexpensive and it has an inch and a half long uh, through spindle. Now the slab was a little uneven on the back so I took a Forstner bit and just buzzed out a couple of spots. Um, I could have gone in with a router and, and made it look nice and perfect but I really didn't think it was necessary considering it's the back of the clock. So I really just needed to make it so that the post would stick out the front. With that ready to go, it was time to fill the numbers on the clock with some epoxy. I'm using the Total Boat High Performance Resin and a little bit of black dye. I take my knife and just sort of clean out any little fuzz that might be left from the engraving. And then I go ahead and pour some black epoxy into all these numbers. Now you can kind of go ahead and pour a little bit extra. Um, now since the clock isn't totally level, it's going to kind of move overnight. And the 7 was kind of half carved, so I used a little bit of tape as a barrier and then some black Starbond CA glue um, to fill it up so that I would have something for the epoxy to sit in. Used the torch to get the bubbles out and I let this sit overnight so it could cure. I tried to level it with a popsicle stick so that it would uh, not ooze out everywhere while it was drying. Once it was all cured up, I went back with an 80 grit sandpaper on the Mirka and I ground away all that excess epoxy, got it down to the main surface finish and I brought it up through the grits up to 320. So just sort of sanding over it, you know, hitting any of the high spots and the surface of this is not flat at all. Uh, it might look flat in the video, but it's got tons of waves in it, which I don't mind at all. I think it gives it some nice depth. Um, and as long as it fits inside the ring and, and looks even up on the wall, I'm totally happy with it. I like that it's natural, you know, it's, it's not supposed to be perfect. Once I got the ring back in there, I could add the screws and secure this thing down. And you can see the way that black patina even sort of settles over time. Just the, you know, overnight as the epoxy cured, that blackening got a little bit darker. And it, it actually looks like it's painted in the video, but in reality, there's a ton of depth in it when you see it in person. Best part of any project with a slab is putting the oil on it. I'm using a clear mineral oil here. I'm just rubbing it in. And what's nice is that the mineral oil can also go on the black wax and it'll sort of preserve it on the inside of the ring. I let that dry and I sort of buff it in with a rag. And then I go and I take some Renaissance wax, which is a micro crystalline wax, which sort of just polishes and protects the face. And I put that on there as well and I add a little bit of wax to the steel as well just to add an extra layer of protection. I really love the way the grain on this walnut popped when you put that oil on it. Sanding up to a high grade is so important when you're doing stuff with, with wood so don't skimp on your sanding it'll make your finish that much better. Putting in the clock mechanism just turning in that little bolt and adding the hands. Super simple to do basically just drill a hole and stick this thing through it. Um, put the little pin on the end add a battery and your clock is ready to go. Overall, I'm super, super pleased with the way this thing came out. Um, this is actually only like the second clock I've ever made. And, you know, to do a slab project like this and have it be in my own house and be able to look at it, especially a piece of wood that's as important as this one, I um, was really happy with it. All right, that about does it for this video. I'm really happy with how this thing came out. I don't usually make too much home decor stuff for myself, but this is actually gonna hang in my house uh, once I get it out of the shop. And as I said in the beginning of the video, this is actually a piece of the same walnut slab that I used to make my dad's urn. So it's kind of sentimental to me, and I know every time I look at it, I'll think of the urn and I'll think of him, so it meant a lot to me. I wanna say thank you to Inventables for sponsoring this video and providing me with the X-Carve. It did a great job on this, and it sort of inspired me to look at the X-Carve and how it will work with freeform material and natural live edge material more and more. Um, I did a video making a slab coffee table a couple months ago that used the X-Carve and you know it's sort of taking it out of the realm of the traditional CNC for like sign making and looking at how you can use live edge material and really make something interesting. Um, this thing was a little challenging with the steel but overall like I said super happy with how it came out. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'd be happy to answer them. If you want to see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, 
behind the scenes stuff, what I'm doing in the shop. Follow me on Instagram at Make Everything Shop. I'm always answering questions and doing live videos and sort of what I'm doing over here. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with friends. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel here to see more videos like this, more videos of me making stuff and you know all sorts of things going on in the shop. I got a lot coming. Uh, the year's kind of coming to an end with a lot of personal projects, so stay tuned for that. And also, be sure to check out Maker Central in the UK. Uh, they just announced the dates. It's in the beginning of May. I'll put a link down below. I went last year. It was a ton of fun. I'll be going this year with a bunch of friends and familiar faces, so check that out. Um, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this. Again, I'm Chris Zep from Make Everything. I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks.